I'm Kat Johnson. I'm the owner of Cat the Farmer, which is a salad-centric farm and food company based in Floyd County, Virginia. Salad-centric, that was a new term to me when I first ran across you. When I first heard you say it, I thought it was pretty interesting. Can you describe what that means? Yeah, it means I grow and make things that belong in salads. So everything I grow is tailored to that genre of food and eating. I grow salad crops, tomatoes, herbs. I make salad dressings, and I also prepare salad kits. So a fully prepared salad with chopped veggies and dressing included. So can you educate me? Is that a common term or is that something that is very cat specific to be a salad centric farmer? (laughs) I like making up words, but I think it could catch on. Sure. I'll help you. (laughs) So you grow these crops and you're in Floyd, Virginia. Can you talk a little bit about your farm and what it's like? You've described yourself as a micro farm. Yeah, the farm itself is only a quarter acre. So I made up another word, which is the farmlet. So I call it my farmlet. And that's where I grow some of the ingredients that go into my value added products. And on the farm is three tunnels. So I can grow inside and extend my season two. And it's situated in Floyd County. It's a really special place. And community is a key word to describe it. So it's very rural, Southwest Virginia, and it's a agricultural community. So there are lots of farmers, beef cattle farmers, veggie farmers. There's lots of farmers who are like me growing using organic practices, which is pretty special. It also has a vibrant bluegrass music scene and cute little downtown. But where I'm at is about 20 minutes from the downtown, sort of all alone in an area called Czech. So dirt roads and mountains and forests and things like that. Yeah, I was going to say like the pictures of your farm are kind of mountainy looking to me, very blue ridgy looking. Yeah, definitely. I was excited. I had a photographer come out and do a drone picture this summer. So I got to see sort of the mountains around me that I can't see when I'm working because of all the trees. Oh my goodness. Have you shared that? I'll have to look at that because I want to see it too. (laughs) Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. Well, you said that you farm with organic practices. And that's kind of where your name came up before with Alice Varon, because she's from the Naturally Grown organization. So can you talk a little bit about that and the way you're using it in the marketplace? Yeah. So I'm certified naturally grown, which is a certification that I voluntarily decided to add to my farm's claims. So I sell at the Blacksburg Farmers Market every Saturday. And -hmm. sometimes people will come up to you and ask, is this sprayed? Is this organic? Or questions like that. And until Mm -hmm. I pursued that extra certification, I just felt like there wasn't a lot to bolster me until someone got to know me and trust me. It's just some lady behind the veggies saying, no, I didn't. Or yes, I did. It's more of a hollow claim. But for the people who aren't familiar with me or what I do or my history, having a certification provides a little bit of extra value and what they provide is more affordable and more accessible than having a USDA agent come out and certify you as organic. So Blacksburg is a much bigger market than Floyd. Are you finding like, when I think of Floyd, I think of the Bluegrass Festival and it has a very, if you live in Virginia, you know that it's got kind of a hippie vibe and there are a lot of people who would be like, totally on board with a micro farmlet with organic practices, but going over into Blacksburg, you're finding more people is so I guess what you're doing is product education. That was a rambling. Yes. (laughs) Thank you. That was a very rambling way to ask a question. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think at Floyd, people know me as Cat the Farmer before I even had a business. But then when I decided to have a business called Cat the Farmer LLC and make these products and go to a larger market like Blacksburg, not everyone knows me. Very Mm -hmm. few did. They know me now, but that's where the certification came in. I got to ask you, focusing on salads, this is a very businessy question and it might be off the mark, but are people are buying complete salads from you, right? You're creating salad kits and then also the ingredients. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. 
So I'm both a farmer just growing greens and people can buy those or they can buy a bag of greens and dressing or they can have a fully prepared kit or sometimes people buy a whole stack of them, one for each day of the week, take them all home and they've got their work week lunches set. That's kind of a cool idea and very like on the mark for the way people think about food right now. Batching food is like a big thing right now. So having those pre-prepared is probably like very much a lifestyle choice. Now you sell your value-added products, of course, the complete salads, but also the dressings, the bottled dressings. Where are you selling those? Because I know that they're, aren't they refrigerated only? Yeah, they're refrigerated dressings. And they sell also at the Blacksburg Farmer's Market and then to a few wholesale accounts like natural food stores and farm stores in our area, which there are a few. Mm -hmm. So it has to be refrigerated all the way. How do you do that chain? Like when you're going, I guess you just put them in coolers on your way to the farm market and sell out of that. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I don't have a reefer truck yet, but hopefully one day. (laughs) Do you put the naturally grown badge on those dressings? I do not. No, they don't qualify. Just my produce is covered under the certified naturally grown. Oh, I'm a little, okay. So what would you have to do to have those qualify? I raised this question with Alice and she said, if your ingredients are organic and certified naturally grown, they could, or is it, do you have to submit them to someone to get the permission to wear that seal? It's not a hundred percent organic ingredients. So select ingredients are, but not everything is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that just a sourcing issue for you? Yeah. Yeah, just I don't think it would have been possible to create a fully organic dressing and have it still be affordable. It's already a premium product and the price point is already pretty high as it is. No, I mean, that's a struggle with craft food brands is to make that decision between ingredients and pricing. I'm working with someone who's having a really hard time. They want to include an organic cheese, but they can't source it at a price that they could turn around and process it in their product and make the product affordable. Yeah, it's that same back and forth. So I asked you about your wholesale customers. What's your plan on that? Do you plan to expand your salad dressings or what is the future for your packaged food looking like? Yeah, for the value-added products like the salad kits and dressings, they kind of fall into two separate categories naturally. With the salad kits, there's some reach that they could have into more of my region. I can certainly produce more of those Mm -hmm. than I am currently and have more subscribers, you know, folks who get that weekly subscription of salads delivered every week. And with the dressings, I feel like I could go even further. Even though they are refrigerated, there's plenty of distributors that do have that cold chain Mm -hmm. intact, or perhaps there's a way to set that up myself or as a cooperative of other growers, set up a system where we're bringing refrigerated product to stores and getting a wider reach together. Mm -hmm. That's a big future goal of mine. I was just going to ask, like, is the cooperative a future goal or just having a wider reach? Both. I think, yeah, maybe one step at a time. Yeah. I was going to say, that's a lot of decision-making to make, really. Well, I wanted to circle around to your package design because that's where we first crossed paths. I think you have like a really cute branding. You worked with an illustrator to come up with some icons for your product. And I'm just wondering what impact do you think that that has on the sale of your, I mean, you're a premium price product. What impact do you think that that has on your sales? Yeah, I think it's been huge. First of all, I just really wanted to work with someone like you to create a cohesive image and sort of like a whole finished package so that when I did ask that premium price, it made sense. So I think I wanted to prove that in my first debut. And I think that we achieved that. And I see it working in real time when I'm at the market because I can see people's eyes landing on my booth and then filling with joy and excitement and (laughs) wanting to hold this product. And I think what it conveys is that I have put the effort into the product that I have intention behind not only what the package looks like, but what's going into it and that it's safe and consistent. And I just love everything that complete package adds to my product. That's good. How much of your product price covers the cost of your packaging? And this is the trick question because there's like, I know there's in your salads, there's 
bottles and lids and all kinds of things that have been all over the mark in the last two years. Yeah, it's different for every product. Salad mm-hmm. kit is a dollar forty, and those are in the compostable packaging, so it's PLA instead of plastic. Mm-hmm. And that's a cost, right? Plastic would have been a lot less expensive. Oh yeah, big time. I estimate that I could have close to a dollar more margin on each item oh, if I man. went with plastic. That is such a commitment to your mission. I hope your shoppers appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that would be the biggest mass. I did start out with the glass packaging for my dressings, and Mm -hmm. I ended up switching over because the choice there was stop making dressings entirely or switch to a more affordable package. So those are now plastic. So it's not 100% perfect, just like Mm -hmm. nothing is. No, I think those are like really valid business decisions that every good food brand faces. Like you have to make a choice. Can I keep going? If I keep to these particular principles, I totally get that you've had to make some difficult decisions. 